The nebula is a sculpture and it has a sort of geometric, multi-tiered matrix that just slowly swims in the, the atrium of the hotel. Truly really the most complicated and mysterious thing. If we formed like Voltron, Ruben would definitely be the head. I'm optimistic that when we pull it out, it's gonna look, it's gonna look right. It's been really hairy. What, me worry? We, we weren't expecting this. I certainly did not envision being in this particular spot ever. Is this gonna work? There's 445 cables. They're going all over the place. It's this uh, massive topological problem. I mean, the point of the weave was really to do all the thinking ahead of time. This is the recipe. Yeah, Ruben actually came through New York in June and uh, said he had a really interesting problem about uh, how to string the nebula. And I made the mistake of saying I thought it was interesting too and staying up most of the night with him working on diagrams. I was like, this is really easy. I can just solve it in no time. And, 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 uh, and of course it was not really easy. the best way to solve it was to solve it backwards, to figure out how you would unbuild it once it was built. And so I, I started writing scripts within Blender to un, uh, you know, say which string would you pull out first, and then which string would you pull out after that, and after that, and basically ended up with a recipe of how to unweave it. And, and what we're doing now is playing the unweave recipe backwards. Our task has been to replicate the path that all those wires take through the scale model with the actual wires on the full scale thing. So the cables come through the, the five foot ring up high overhead, through the weave, and then they screw down to these little plates. And the little plates are like a jigsaw puzzle and they get kind of put back together into the grid shape. And it's just a way to grab, you know, like 20 cables at a time and move them all into approximate position rather than having to pull, you know, one at a time. I'm going to go 225 on the outside of everything else. Am I on the inside or the outside of these? I'm going to be on the outside of all the ones that are hanging. 167. 224. 370. Who is reading T6? 225. Someone's doing 391 and 423 and 411. No running into this hanging one. If you can't tell, like they're too close, then ask me and I can mm -hmm. figure out which way it is. I think this is too chaotic. This whole batch, I, I have no idea if they're right or not. We tried to run the easier cables first, but, but after doing a few of them, we couldn't tell if they were right. And so we stopped and brought everything through the weave. We want to go into the weave at the notch. So if there's some yeah. crossing like this on top of it, we don't go underneath anything. I was thinking about how to get the cables from the ring to the model. And I ended up on the yeah. phone with Dan. Dan was actually goat sitting. And we like ended up on the phone for hours, just like making sure that if we put it through the ring, it just all, in fact, worked. 303. 331. There are pieces of wood that are basically miniature versions of segments of pulleys on the cable net. It looks like you need 292. We had them routed to, to the islands, and then we moved the islands into the space on the cable net near where the pulleys that those cables will actually attach to lie. Next step is to cut everything slack. Just, just loosen all of them. Then we're gonna have to cut all those coils loose. Ruben kept saying to us, he's like, I think we should just take the coils out and just lay the wires out. Take apart everything. Just take the weave completely apart. And we were all like, no dude, keep them in the coils. That, that scared all of us. We were just like, is he crazy? Like, take them out of the coils? No way. We need to take out all the coils. It's time to drop the coils. Yeah. The coils are nice and, and compact and controlled and we can like see what's going on. And the concept of having them all loose is just totally out of our comfort zone. <laughs> We're putting our faith in Ruben that this is gonna work. I think it'll work. And we're gonna try to keep them relatively uh, untangled, even though that's a relative term. <laughs> Getting tangled up in here. Got numerous. 
occurrences of hookage. We're also going to take the weave model to the ground. Hope this works. What we want to do is take all these out to their sort of respective locations. We already uh, ran into one situation where the wire physically wouldn't make it from the ring to its pulley. So is this cable cut too short? If there's not one or two more like that, I'll be, I'll be slightly surprised. Why is that cable coming from the thimble down? That's 278. It broke. It broke in the middle of the cable. The ferrule broke off of this. So it goes like this. This could go to there, this could go to there, and this could go to here. 445 cables. 445 wires in a pile. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> right now, I have a very narrow focus. I'm really not looking at the whole piece anymore. I'm just looking at these cables. carry that whole mess on top of everything, right? We just need to be very slow and deliberate. Yeah, super slow. Just watch everything. Super slow. We don't want to get a tangle and try to force it. We started pulling it out. There was this absolutely incredible tangle. A lot of Tangling. So, oh, this other cable is caught. There we go. The shape. Yeah, they are moving. Yeah, they're moving. The jiggle. I know that it, topologically I can pull those islands out and it's, the weave is going to stay the same. What I didn't know is whether in fact they would tease out. But luckily the nylon coating just made it so slippery and they just, just slid. The so nylon coating is better for the longevity of the cable, which is why it's there, but I didn't realize it was going to be such an advantage for this process, so I was lucky. Thank God. This morning was a little bit scary. I mean, when we started pulling it out, there was this absolutely incredible tangle. It looked like disaster was right in front of us. You know, there was a moment here where it looked pretty unbelievable. I never would have seen those wires sorting themselves out. And Ruben saw it. He saw it from, you know, pretty much as soon as the pile was there, he could think about it and go, OK, this is going to work. Pretty amazing. <laughs> There's stuff going on here that I never would have thought was possible before, which is really cool. Once all these cables are in the right position, then we'll lift it up and attach weights to each cable. When all these weights on all the cables and all of the cables are going from the grid, you know, in a straight line up to the ring, that'll be the, you know, big moment where we can actually see how good the weave is and how many crosses there are and what we have to do to, to fix it up. Well, you're only dragging 12,000 pounds through space, so just get on it. over the Dallas area right now. Tornado? Tornadoes are forming around us. <laughs> Get away from all glass. That's hard to do in this space. Tornado touchdown, we're being called out of the atrium. We're done.
We finally get some light, and now we got to stop. And this is just north of the Dallas County Jail and the uh, Lou Sterrett Justice Center, and just west, I believe, of the Anatole and those hotels. So, uh, you know, we possibly dodged a bullet there with a lot of people in that area. The lower artwork is a matter of assembly. We made 10,000 anodized cones. It was intense. Putting the jewels together itself is, is super easy. Easy is my favorite. We did have a slight problem with the flexibility in the joints of the bundles of six and five, um, where they just weren't, they weren't articulating enough. But, but we have a solution, which is some, I don't know, 1,400 split rings that we're gonna put in there just to give it a little bit more flexibility. When you guys plug this thing in, we're going to want to conduct something called a zero amplitude test. 10-4, we'll stand by until you tell us you're plugged in. Uh, bad news, guys. They put the wrong kind of fitting out there somewhere for you. Folks, did not have female fitting. Might be on my own cable in. Shit. That's not going to happen right now. I mean, unless somebody can come up with an electrician out of their out of thin air. Wrong plug. Pull. Wrong plug. Wrong plug. It could be, you know, we told them one thing and they heard another. We showed them one thing and they read another. It could be anything, I don't know, but it's not the end of the world. It's a double rigging call. It's not the end of the world. It's a mistake on somebody's part. It's not the end of the world. The adapter was Greg's idea. I think it's a winner. We'll uh, make up a one foot long thing with female and a male on it that uh, goes to the dealio and they just have to plug this thing in, they don't have to get out a screwdriver or anything. You just need to follow somebody's vision, even if it sounds totally nuts. Because it sounded pretty nuts. You know, all these cable numbers are out of my head. I don't remember any of them anymore. And right now, I'm just, I'm just looking at the piece and just enjoying it. I think if you're with the right people, you can do anything. It looks so effortless, it looks so easy. Humans are weird, we just sort of forget about all the misery and we move on and just sort of looking at the piece going, wow, this is, this is really great.